In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. Let's pray the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle within us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created. Thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of your faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, granted by the same Spirit may be truly wise, and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O Lady, Mother of the Church, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. All God's angels and saints, pray for us. My friends and Jesus and Mary, we've already arrived at lesson number 24. And we're right in the middle of talking about sacraments, the seven sacraments. So we've talked about baptism and how to renew our baptismal commitment. And one of the best ways is by consecrating yourself to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Beautiful thing to do. By the way, starting today, you can start a novena. Novena means nine days. Because nine days from today is May 13th. May 13th is the feast day of Our Lady of Fatima. You can see in the wall, I have a picture of a Lady Guadalupe, but also it's a smaller picture. You have a picture of a Lady of Fatima. So start today, every day, for nine days, pray the rosary, because our Lady of Fatima said six times, six times to pray the Holy Rosary. Okay. Today we're going to be talking about the sacrament of confirmation. So there are three sacraments of initiation. And they are baptism, the Eucharist, and confirmation. Now, the ordinary minister of the sacrament of confirmation is the bishop. The bishop is one of the successors of the apostles. In a special occasion, however, a priest can also confirm. But he does so with the chrism that has been consecrated by the bishop. So normally it's going to be the bishop in cases of emergency, it could be your local pastor. Okay, who is able to receive the sacrament confirmation? All baptized persons who have been baptized can be validly confirmed, but they have to receive the sacrament properly. So, what are the conditions? First, you have to be suitably instructed. For that reason, in our parish, the preparation to be confirmed is two years. Also, those who are going to be confirmed have to be in the state of sanctifying grace. So before being confirmed, it's highly recommended that you make a good confession. Now, is it a sin to neglect the sacrament of confirmation? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Technically, confirmation is not necessary for salvation. However, it's going to be much easier, much easier for us to get to heaven if we have confirmation than if we're not confirmed. I'll give you an image. It's much easier to be driving your bike down a hill with the wind behind you 
than to be driving your bike up the hill into the wind. That's a good analogy I can give to you. Because if you're going down the, the hill with wind at your back, easy. Or another image might be if you have a sailboat, you're sailing the boat into the wind. That's hard. That's a person trying to live his life and make it to the shore of salvation without confirmation. The other would be the sailboat with the sails up, catching the wind, and the wind is pushing the sailboat with speed and graceful ease to the shore. So the canon law of the church in canon number 890 says that we are obliged to receive the sacrament at the appropriate time. How is confirmation conferred? Okay, how is it given? Okay, in order to show confirmation's relationship to baptism, the renewal of baptismal promises precedes the conferral of bap confirmation. Usually confirmation is conferred or given by the bishop in the context of a mass. And the bishop, he's got his big hat on that's called a mitre. He's got his a st walking stick that's called a crozier, symbolic of the shepherd and the sheep. The bishop calls upon the Holy Spirit while extending his hands over the whole group to be confirmed. Since the time of the apostles, this gesture has signified the gift of the Holy Spirit. But the most important condition for, bat, for confirmation to be valid is the confirm, confirmandi. They approach the bishop and he, with chrism, he anoints the forehead of those who are to be confirmed and he says these words. These are the key words with the chrism. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. This condition is indispensable. Then they'll say the Lord be with you and also with you. And then the bishop greets you. What is this sacred chrism? The sacred chrism in its use in confirmation is a sign of consecration or a sign of belonging to Jesus Christ. So that you already belong to Jesus Christ in baptism, but with confirmation, your belonging to Jesus Christ is going deeper and deeper. So what are some of the effects of confirmation? So when you're confirmed, there are certain effects that that it produces. It's invisible, but it's very powerful. Number one is confirmation confers the full outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It's the same spirit that Jesus granted to the apostles on the feast of Pentecost. So these are the things that confirmation does. It increases it gives an increase and deepens the grace of baptism that you've already received. So it, it, it increases the graces of baptism. First, it roots us more deeply in the divine sonship, which makes us cry, Abba, Father. We're already sons and daughters of God, but we go deeper in our filial relationship with God the Father. Next, it unites us more firmly to Christ. Next, it increases the gifts of the Holy Spirit within us. Maybe remember the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You receive these gifts of the Holy Spirit in baptism, and they are wisdom. There are seven. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel, fortitude, piety, fear of the Lord. Those are the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. They're fortified within you. And next, 
it renders our bond with the church more perfect. The church is the mystical body of Christ. So you're becoming a more strong, firmly rooted member in the mystical body of Christ. And then it gives us a special strength of the Holy Spirit so that we can spread and defend the faith by word and action as true witnesses of Christ, to confess the name of Christ boldly and never to be ashamed of the cross. That is taken from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 1302 and 1303. So if you want to go deeper into this topic, go to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, 1302, 1303. I repeat, Catechism of the Catholic Church, 1302 and 1303. And confirmation also, it confers a sacramental character an undestroyable spiritual mark that will never be erased from you. Now, how can we defend our Catholic faith? It's done in two ways. You defend your Catholic faith by your example, by the way you're living, but also by word. So someone at school asks you, well, what's the Bible? You were able to explain what the Bible is. Well, someone asks you, what are the mysteries of the rosary? Tell them the mysteries of the rosary. Someone asks you, okay, I've heard about Moses and the Ten Commandments. Tell them about the Ten Commandments. Someone asks you about um, what is a priest? Tell them what a priest is. Someone asks you, well, how do you pray? Ah, you already learned that. Prayer is what? It's listening to God, talking to God, loving God. In other words, share your faith. Don't be afraid to share your faith. And one of the best ways, one of the best ways for us to grow in our faith is to share our faith with others. Another element of confirmation is your confirmation name. You can keep the same name that you have when you're baptized, but also you can choose another name. And the confirmation name that you want to choose is a saint, a saint. And you should read up on the life of that saint. And not only read up on the life of the saint, but that saint should become your friend. You should pray to that saint and try to imitate the virtues of that saint. Okay, one last idea. If you have been confirmed, then you have a sponsor. And if eventually you're gonna be confirmed, you have to get a sponsor in Spanish, you're called padrino, madrina. Okay, the sponsor has to have three conditions. Maybe one day you're gonna be a sponsor. The first is the sponsor has to be 18 years of age. The second is that the sponsor has to have received the three sacraments of initiation. That is to say, your sponsor has to have has to be baptized. Second, has to have received Holy Communion, First Communion. And third, your sponsor should have received the sacrament of confirmation. By the way, your sponsor cannot be a Jehovah Witness or a Baptist or an atheist or a Muslim. Your sponsor has to be a Catholic. Also, and this is very important, your sponsor has to be leading a holy life capable of good in, giving good example to, to you who are being confirmed. So that means, say for example, you wanted your your uncle to be your your sponsor, but your uncle happens to be living with his girlfriend. He's not married in the church. Maybe just he's married in a civil marriage in Las Vegas. That's not good. Your uncle, your uncle is not living a good Catholic life. He's not giving you a good example. 
So those are the three conditions. 18 years of age, the three sacraments of initiation, baptism, communion, confirmation, and your padrino or your sponsor has to be someone that is trying to live a good holy life. So my friends, we've gone through quickly in 15 minutes the sacrament of confirmation. And this confirms your baptismal sacrament that you received and it's fortifying the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, he's the one that can help us to become saints. Saint Pope John the 23rd said that the saints are the spiritual masterpieces of the Holy Spirit and you are called to become a saint. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.